Welcome to Chapter 16. January 2020 Syncope. At the start of 2020 when I was moving from hostel to hostel, never at the same address for more than a week I had a fainting episode. In January 2020, I was standing outside a hostel and trying to open the door I recall feeling very confused and thinking helplessly again and again that I wanted to open the door and wondered how to do that. The next thing that happened was I was down on the ground a sharp pain on one side of my head it was all wet around my head and I realized it was blood. I had moved backwards by several feet from where I had been standing, then fallen backwards and crashed my head against a stone. Between feeling confused about opening the door, and feeling a sharp pain on one side of my head, and finding myself prostrated, I have no recollection of what happened. Luckily, the place where I fell was not one of the worst places to fall. It was close to a backpacker's entrance and opposite a taxi stand at 9 a.m. on a Monday. Two taxi drivers lifted me when I really couldn't get up on my own. I've always been able to stand up if I fell, but this was a tough one. If no one had lifted me, I don't know how long I would have lain there before I could help myself. One of the taxi drivers took me to Mater Hospital. He said his name was Morris and did not charge any money. I said, God bless you. He took me to the receptionist and told her I just blacked out. At that point, I did not understand that I had blacked out so I wondered why he said it. They told me I did not need stitches but to keep the bandage for at least two or three weeks, and not to allow water on it from the shower. They said the bleeding was not anything to worry about because when you have a head injury your bleed a lot they did a head scan and told me immediately that it came out completely normal. They told me to go home after that. I don't know if people can understand that if you black out you most likely have an illness. Doctors need to try and find out why I blacked out. They should not pat me on the back so to speak, tell me I am normal, and dismiss the case. Doctors know fully well I have an illness if I blacked out. They know there are a few reasons which are likely causes. Dismissing my case means doctor are allowing the disease, whose details they may or may not know to fester. And doctors know that better than anyone else. Such neglect done to me or others can have serious consequences, since they did not pay heed to warning signs in the earlier stages. Since I had a fake scan, precisely a brain MRI done of my head in December 2022, when I was admitted to Mater Hospital for neurological issues, I know that the sentence I just spoke sounds unbelievable to the reader. It would have to me as well, had it not happened to me. A more detained explanation of fake brain MRI is in a chapter further down. If you read that chapter, it will be up to you what you think of my explanation. Likewise, doctors must not tell someone who pukes blood and becomes delirious that they're normal. You don't tell someone with very violent puking it was a stomach infection and say, shush, shut up, so they do not have to document their systolic is at 250. This incident of August 2018 was just allowing a disease, which definitely not okay. My question is also about the Valoid prescription for vomiting. The prescription literature says this drug Valoid acts on the brain to stop brain-induced vomiting in case of brain tumors and often given to terminally ill people. My question then is about this type 
of vomiting. It is very violent and uncomfortable and challenges your breathing and your heart. Whatever the medical cause, I know it is very different from normal vomiting. I had this violent vomiting in August 2018 at Mater accident and emergency on the above described occasion. I had had a couple of similar episodes in Hillingdon Hospital in London in 2017 at their accident and emergency. On all the three or more occasions, I was injected to stop the vomiting, which worked. Perhaps they injected the same drug in London and Dublin. I was also prescribed Valoid at least on two separate occasions at Mater Hospital to prevent recurrence of this type of violent vomiting. One of the dates was August 2022. So, like heart-related issues, I also have recurrent violent vomiting that persists by affecting me now and then. This leaves me with unanswered questions as I read on Google for as much information as I can get. Please note, while I cannot heal or diagnose myself, I can receive less information on Google than what a doctor would know. Based on the literature for Valoid, this type of violent vomiting comes from the brain, which controls every part of the body. The literature says the brain can induce nausea for many reasons, for example, a brain tumor. It said it is often used to relieve brain induced nausea in terminally ill patients. The Valoid prescribed in August 2022 was a very strong dose and I decided not to take it due to side effects. Many obvious questions arise in my mind as doctors or the medical community won't talk. Do I have a brain tumor or other brain-related causes of brain-induced nausea? The fact I have neurological issues suggests to me as a layperson that I may have a brain tumor or something similar. Besides, I think someone told me that some brain tumors grow very slowly. That would explain why, if I had these violent vomiting episodes since 2017, means I have had the brain tumor since 2017, and it has not killed or completely paralyzed me in six years up to today, which is August 5, 2023. Is it possible that I do not have a brain tumor? Is it possible that this brain-induced nausea was induced by a stomach infection in August 2018, and therefore a stomach infection gives brain-induced nausea. Would a stomach infection also raise my blood pressure to the roof and make me incoherent and also bring up blood? It must be one hell of a stomach infection. Did the doctors genuinely think or have confirmed or just suspect this could be a stomach infection? On the other hand, I muse doctors may have confirmed or suspect that I have a brain tumor, or something similar. If that case, the doctors, who are the general medical profession, rather than one particular doctor, have kept their secret of suspicion or confirmation that I have a brain tumor or the like, for six years from 2017 to 2023. That would mean doctors have withheld treatment options for six years, from 2017 to 2023, for a brain tumor. By being tight-lipped, and presenting an impenetrable wall, doctors have withheld information relating to brain tumors in case they are suspected or confirmed. Since many who have a brain tumor have survived after treatment, often with body parts paralyzed and whatnot, a suspected brain tumor by the medical profession are holding their silence about the suspected brain tumor to make sure I die. Finally, the fact I am prescribed a drug used for the terminally ill. Do doctors feel I am terminally ill? I believe I have been prescribed Valoid initially in 2021. So can we believe that since 2021, doctors have felt my illness, I am prevented from learning about has progressed to the terminal 
stage in 2021. What if Valoid is also given to people who are not terminally ill and I am one of them? The fact I was given a very strong dose in 2022 suggests negative possibilities, although they are not confirmed. Let me explain. If a drug has very bad side effects, proper doctors won't prescribe them unless the benefits outweigh the risks. Let us say a drug makes 50% of people who take it daily for a year blind, and 90% of people who take it daily for five years blind. If they are not crazy, they are not going to prescribe such drugs like cups of coffee. Sorry I don't mean to be impertinent, but if this drug is painkiller or some such thing, they can give this drug to a terminally ill person who is expected to live a month. That person will die too soon to go blind. From that dangerous drug, even if they did become blind, they are to live for days on the planet. The pain relief therefore outweighs the losses such as blindness. I am questioning why such a high dose of Valoid was prescribed. If they do such things, I would say the doctor has not got my best interests at heart. If many medics do this at many locations, and there is a pattern, then I say the medical profession as a whole does not have my best interest at heart. We did a test and it was normal. The test may not be accurate so missed the abnormality the test may not be the right one.